Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. Some of y'all said y'all like my jacket, so combined with the fact that it's really cold out here, I said, you know, let me wear this thing. To dape it up, I'm going to show you the techniques that I use that allows me to produce animations in a style that I like. Handmade looking, but that I am able to do these things in manageable time frames. Craftsmen have been piddling with animation since probably uh, 8mm films days. And also have experimented with VHS stop motion, which is really hard to do. But uh, I had at one time dreams of making short films and telling, you know, stories using animations techniques. But then eventually you have bills to pay. And for Craftsman, it was at that time a lot easier to just pay bills with a shovel. So later on down the road, I went back to school, got me a degree. Got my first job in an air-conditioned office. It's supposed to look like somebody is waving in the background, but it look like, uh, it look like Craft Mama beating the key is what it looks like, but it's not like that. And Craft Mama real tall like that. Anyway, we click clacking along, things established, things rolling, and I wind up able to be self-employed. And then just randomly, I started put up videos on YouTube. And after a couple of years, I started getting to get that little animation bug in me one, two try to animate things again. But animation is tedious. At one point I said to myself, let's just use puppets. In fact, I almost started out my whole YouTube channel using a puppy. Well, hello there. Welcome to the Craftsman Show. My name is your host, The Craftsman. But I feel like if you do that, then, you know, you pretty much got to stick with it the whole time and that can be Something that can just wear you out, you know. Oh, mercy. With that in focus. So what I'm getting at is that for me to be able to produce animations on my own, it had to be easy. Or as easy as possibly that you can do. I recently posted my video called, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. And the response to that little video has been very encouraging. The majority of y'all really liked it. One person said I copied it from a Dutch cartoon thing. But to be honest, that's the first I had ever heard it that I went to uh, look it up. You know, but I ain't watched no Dutch television, though I can tell you that. But to go ahead and jump into a question right off the bat, how long did it take you to produce the 57 seconds of animation? It took about three days. And that's not full three days, that's just, you know, after work I get up enough and I load up my audio track and I spend me about an hour, maybe two hours working through. But technically I could have sat down and did the whole thing in one day, you know. But what took the, the longest was months and months before all of this, just figuring out how to get the right look that I wanted. Because I had developed this thing months and months ago, but it took me months and months to get to it to begin with. But now I'm at a place where I want to really, really start to incorporate it. And so what is this little animation technique that I use? I like to refer to it as the let the computer handle a lot of the stuff, but also don't get it looking too smooth technique. And for me, I can trace the original seed for this idea back to a gentleman named Keith Lango. Keith Lango used to uh, animate vegetables. One day he got to talking about ways to make his 3D characters look out jittery. So that even, you know, on a held pose, in other words, when they being still, ain't, ain't moving, ain't doing nothing, that they still could look alive, so to speak. So in other words, you know, get that little jittery energy looking thing, even though nothing's really happening. And then that right thought is economy. With animation, if you want any movement, then you have to cause that movement. My first attempt at getting a jittery look on a character was with real pencil sketches drawn 
over and over and over. I just took and scanned these into the computer. I drew me a little character, printed me out a template with a whole bunch of great lines and things on it. And I just drew it over, drew it one way, drew it the next. It's going to all look a little bit different. So I scanned that into the computer and then kind of stacked them on top of each other, then played that back in a loop. And then so there you go. So no matter what the character was doing, he always has sort of an energy to him. But even using my little hand-drawn frames, it's still possible to have it looking too smooth and computery. All right, that's 24 frames per second right there. And so that brings me to another little secret that I'm going to share, but it ain't really a secret. It ain't even, it ain't really a secret. Although my animations always is export and output at 24 frames per second, I limit everything roughly to about 12 frames a second, most of the time, 12 frames per second. Why come that is? It gives you the equivalent look what I'm trying to say. It gives you the equivalence of being looking like it was shot on two. That's a technique in animation where you expose or you shoot your uh, frame every frame twice. Even if you projecting it back at film on 24 frames per second, you still only really shooting 12 frames per second. AKA, you getting done in half the time. A comment. For example, Artman animations, they oftentimes will shoot on twos. And it's got such a wonderful little look to it that the Lego movie, do y'all remember? It was 3D computer generated. They emulated that little effect by holding their character movements for two, sometimes even three frames. And what that did was it really drove home that, was that sort of handmade look. You know, it just had a quality to it if you watch it. That's probably why a lot of people thought the Lego movie was stop motion when it really was not. It looked pretty photorealistic too on top of it. So that really, really uh, drove home the effect. And then getting back to Artman's animation, another influence for Craftsman is a gentleman named Stefan Marjoro. He worked on Buku Artman's uh, projects like, you know, audience or commercials. He worked on the uh, creature comforts. A cloud of water molecules. I learned about Stefan when he did a little write-up in an uh, animations magazine. And it was specifically about the lip sync. And I cut some pages at the magazine and kept it in my little animations resource area. And one big thing that Arsman does right is my opinion is that they go big with the mouth shapes. They really, really drive it home and sell it, you know. And Keith Lango, who I was talking about a little while ago, he wrote a little a chapter in this book right here about lip sync animation. I want to do a video just about lip sync animation because really there's some principles behind it that I just, you know, I've learned, I've picked up on from various different little uh, places. And I really would like to share that with y'all. But for now, we just sticking to the, you know, basic little pipeline of how I'm able to get animations done in a relatively short amount of time. So it turned out that I did not really like the hand-drawn look as much as I thought that I was going to. It did give me a sketchy look, but it was almost too sketchy, uh, too wobbly, wobbly, googly. And then I started to learn that you can get some pretty good pen and paper effects looks in After Effects using what was available to you. So I wanted to try that. But I still wanted to at least start with a with a pencil sketch, a pen sketch, you know. So I took this little, I'm not sure what this really is, this little character main little thing I sketched. And this is how he looked at the very first, uh, when I first did drama. And I brought that into Inkscape. And Inkscape is a free program, by the way. I converted that into a vector. Uh, PS, a vector is a basically an image made up of mathematically defined curves. So you can zoom in and it stays sharp because the pixel is being generated dynamically. As compared to a rasterized, aka bitmap image, which is made up of a set amount of pixels. So anyway, I got my little vector. And basically this is going to be my ink lines for my character. So I brought my little simple character over into After Effects. I scanned me a little sheet of paper like this right there and brought that into After Effects and put it right underneath the character. And then I started to mess with all the different little filters that come with After Effects. Started playing with the little jitter displaced one. And this right here is the part probably that took the most time because all it was is really the plugins got so many parameters and numbers and things and you have to just fiddle with it. And so for me, I tried to make it look not just like it's pure, just pure black lines, you know, but it is going to be ink blended up into paper is the look I was going for. Like the ink was kind of bleeding into the texture of the paper. And I was liking that little jitter right there, but I felt like it needed some more. 
something, something else. And I found out online about that you can, uh, with After Effects, you can do the little formulas and things. So now I got my little piece of paper, and it's just kind of moving around and doing, you know, kind of stop motion and looking. And the computer never get tired of doing that, you know. Thank you, computer. But can we push it to the limit? Turbulence all up over the top of this. Gives me another just kind of a random kind of overall jibber jib drop of it. But look at the little smoothness of this right there, like I was talking about earlier. Let's knock down the smoothness of the posterized time, 12 frames per second. Like the right one. And now I'm showing y'all today, I'm just, you know, just the quick version, the quick version of how I did all this. But trust me when I say that it took me uh, not the most technical advanced person, you know, with this stuff. It took me a while to get this myth kind of dialed in to where I like it. And with all that in place, with all this right there I'm showing you, now I got me something that I can just feed in my animations into it. All right. So knowing what kind of look that I can get, that I can accomplish now, I was encouraged to just keep on pushing things and actually move forward with uh, animation. So back over in Inkscape, I went out here to refine my character, got it cleaned up looking, added me some color, put a little button on it. You know, I think character needs some kind of a little button or something. Made me a bunch of different mouth shapes. Craftsman, that's too many mouth shapes. Craftsman, what, you ain't supposed to animate the tongue? Crazy. So now I got me a little character. And I got Buku mouth shapes and eyes shapes and, you know, enough that hopefully we can do some things with this character. Now, as you can see around here, I got different versions of the eyeballs with the pupil. But you can really, technically, you can just put the pupil on its own layer and then just move it around how you want to, you know, when you're doing your animation. But this is just what I did to start out, you know. Then what happens is I bring all this stuff, my character, my mouth, my eyes, all of it into my video editor. And at this point, let me stop and say that you can use Adobe, Premiere, Sony Vegas, Final Cut Pro, you know, whatever that you uh, that you want to use. A filmmaker friend of mine well, introduced me to a thing called Edis. This is the same program that I have used to edit every single one of my step crafting videos. So for me, I'm just using what I'm familiar with. And I already know that what I'm about to show y'all is really kind of fiddly and that there's better things out there. But, you know, a bunch of y'all already been telling me about craft, man, you need to get character animator, things like that. But I'm just so darn comfortable doing it this way that I just keep on, you know, doing it this way right there. So with all my little character, my character parts and everything's already laid out, I went out to my sound booth and just recorded me some little test audio. And that's the sound booth. I brought that audio up into my little editor, and then I started bringing in my little character mouse over the top of whatever it is being said so that it matches it. And as you can see, this is the most tedious part of the whole thing right there. But for some reason, I really enjoy this mess. But once I get that done, I export the animation out. And for y'all technical people, I export it out as an uncompressed AVI with the alpha channel. So, you know, 32-bit file. And uh, either that or I do a ping PNG sequence. And then I bring a little talking gentleman with his eyes moving, his mouth moving, all that stuff. I'll bring all that into After Effects. And then basically I just feed that into my little uh, my little template, quote unquote. So all the work on the front end is now getting ready to pay off. All right. I hit render. And then I just let that thing render. And I go to the house and give me some sweet tea. See what our craft mom is up to. Baby, I got an animation render now. And she said, that's good, baby. I'm proud of you. Finally getting to do some of the things that you always wanted to do. Then I just tell her, you know, baby, I, I couldn't do any of this stuff without your support. You know, just basic things like that. You know, marital conversations that you have. And then I make the journey back through the woods to my animation studio, a.k.a. Uh, Steady Crafting Workshop. And it's still rendering. But that's all right, because at least I'm not having to sit there and do all the little nitty-gritty, jittery, turbulent, organic-looking stop-motion stimulation style effect manually by hand, you know, tediously. Economy. And now the render is complete. So I bring it into my editor and check it against the audio to determine, you know, if I need to adjust it a little. Uh, sometimes, you know, it might help it to offset it by two frames. You know, it might make it look right. 
I would say that that's not a always 100% rule. I tend to agree with Richard Williams that you know it's a case-by-case -case basis on what looks right. But anyway, the computer has accomplished a lot of things for us right here because compared to this right though, all right, to this right here. See that? And again, this is uh, this is my preferential. You know, you may not even really like that. You might like the clean style, you know, real smooth, you know, flash animation style look. You know, but me, I kind of like that little, uh, that little organic looking, handmade looking approach to it, you know. By the way, when it comes down to doing actual character animation where, you know, you say you're moving your character around, not just doing lip sync uh, interview style animation like what I do. But you got to move the whole character around, get their arms flapping, make the uh, make them walk and do things. Then you got all kinds of options. But e even within character movements, I'm thinking about what economy. Because I know that when it comes down to it, I can only do so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to make some butterous move. You know, Pixar looking. Uh, stuff out here in my workshop. I'm just, you know, really personally, I lean more towards the crew, low tech, lo fi, not a lot going on type of things, you know. I help you. I know this was a good bit of technical information, but I feel like that it could be useful anyway to somebody up out there. And the bottom line to uh, all this mess I've been talking about is it can be accomplished with other software. This just the tools that I have and that I'm comfortable with. And so hopefully with all of this in place now, I can start to do my animated video. Craft man, you're supposed to make DIYs, craft videos. Your channel is called Steady of Crafting. Actually, it was supposed to be called Steady of Crafting Animations. Technique, but you know, that was too long. So I just said, call it Steady of Crafting. And then, you know, let's do some, uh, photo transfer video that's not a true story how i got started but you know i'm just being silly i love y'all and keep steady crafting animation that's just some invisible string in case y'all was wondering you know you can move things around like that with them. That's economy.